This video for Math 94, we will discuss problems from section 10.3 and 10.4, rational exponents and radicals. This is like homework number 9, problems 11, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now, in the last video, we talked about how the mth root of x to the n equals x to the n over m, provided this expression is defined. And I mentioned briefly all these laws of exponents which we have seen before. We even used some of them in the last video. We can use these laws to help us simplify radicals now that we know how to write a radical as a rational exponent. Let's look at some examples. Three, the fourth root of 3,125 over the fourth root of 5. There's lots of ways to do this problem. But here's one way. The fourth root of 3,125. 3,125, by the way, is 5 to the fifth power. OK, if you didn't know that. So we can write this like this. That gives you 5 to the 5 fourths over 5 to the 1 fourth. OK, using that definition for radicals and rational exponents that we have up here. So you see how that works? Here's my radical. Here's my rational exponent. Here's my radical. Remember, this power is 1, so I get that. Now, by my rules of exponents, I have x of a over x of b equals x of a minus b. So I can write this as 5 to the 5 fourths minus 1 quarter. 5 fourths minus 1 fourth is 5 to the 4 fourths, which is just 5. So that's kind of an interesting problem to look at there. There are lots of ways to do that. That's just one of them. Let's take a look at this one. Again, I'm going to think about this using some of these laws of exponents. This is the cube root of 25, which, by the way, is 5 squared times the cube root of 5. Well, if I use rational exponents, that's 5 to the 2 thirds times 5 to the 1 third. Again, using that rule of rational exponents that I have m over n and 1 over n here, I have this situation. Now, what do we do with a radical a exponents when the base is the same? We add the exponents. So that's 2 thirds times 1 third, 2 thirds plus 1 third, which is 1. So that, again, is 5. You might want to take a moment to pause the video and see if you can do this one. You can do this a lot of ways, both with and without rational exponents. Using it with rational exponents, let's look at it this way. 64 divided by 4 is 16. 16 is 4 squared. So I can think about that as 4 squared to the 1 half. Using my laws of exponents, I get the answer 4. Now, life gets a little more interesting once we start adding some variables. So you'll see the instructions simplify, assume variables are non-negative. Now, you know about the rules of radicals already, that we want to take out the highest power that we can. So here, this is 100 times n. And that's the square root of 100 times the square root of n. And that's 10 times the square root of n. No problem there. Here, this is 1 one hundredth, just in case you've forgotten. That's what 0 0.01 means, times n. So that's the square root of 1 over 100 times the square root of n. So that's the square root of n over 10, if you simplify that. Cube root, cube root of n over cube root of 1,000. That's the cube root of n. Oh, the cube root of 1,000 is 10. Now, these problems, it was a lot easier just to leave them as radicals. These were very straightforward, simplifying as radicals. These problems, however, it might be easier to use them as rational exponents. 
Here we have x to the 5 eighths over x to the 1 half. Because these have the same base, I can subtract the exponents. Now, don't be afraid because these have different denominators. You should know that you find a common denominator. 1 half is 4 eighths. 5 eighths minus 4 eighths is x to the 1 eighth, or the eighth root of x. This one is x to the 3 eighths times x to the 4 halves. Now, if you think about this, this is x to the 3 eighths plus x to the 4 halves. Well, x to the 4 halves is just 2. So this is x and 2 to the 3 eighths, 2 and 3 eighths. But if I do 2 and 3 eighths, if I write that as an improper fraction, I have 2 times 18 is 16 plus 3 is 19 eighths. Okay, so that's one way to write that solution. This is a really goofy problem. But let's take a look at this. We have the sixth root, the third root, and x to the fifth. And you know, when I have these three, I'm going to multiply them. So that's x to the five times one third, which is five thirds, times one sixth, which is five eighteenths. Now, I cannot say that problems d, e, and f have a whole lot of practical application. They seem to be more just to help you learn these rules of exponents. Now let's talk about something a little tricky. You notice in the last problem, it said assume variables are non-negative. Let's think about the square root of x squared. You might be tempted to say that answer is yes, is x. Well, that's sometimes true. Let me show you what I mean. Suppose x is a positive number, like 5. This is the square root of 5 squared. The square root of 5 squared is the square root of 25. Now remember, this symbol, this radical symbol, means find me the principal or positive square root. So the square root of 25 is 5. But if x is negative, the square root of, for example, negative 5 squared, Negative 5 squared is still 25. And the square root of 25, since this means positive square root, is 5. In this case, x was 5, and the answer was x. In this case, x was negative 5, and the answer wasn't x. How do I get an answer so that the number is the same, but the sign is always positive? I put absolute value around it. So technically, the square root of x squared equals the absolute value of x. However, if you have the instructions that say either x is greater than or equal to 0, or assume variables are non-negative, you don't need to worry about this. Now, this does not apply for all radicals. Think about the cube root of x cubed. You, again, would be tempted to say this is equal to x. And in this case, you'd be right. Think about the cube root of 2 cubed. The cube root of 2 cubed is the cube root of 8. And the cube root of 8 is positive 2. Again, the cube root means the principal or positive cube root. And that is what we get here. If I plug in a negative number for x, like negative 2, the cube root of negative 2 cubed is negative 8. And the cube root of negative 8 is well defined. It's negative 2. So here, if x was positive, like 2, I got an answer that was also x. If x is negative, I got an answer that was also x. So you can kind of generalize this. If n is even, the nth root of x to the n equals the absolute value of x. If n is odd, the nth root of x to the n equals x. But you have to be careful. Let me show you what I mean. We're going to do some problems here. I want you to simplify the expressions. The inputs are not restricted. If that instruction is given, it means watch out for absolute value. We already talked about how the square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. The cube root of z to the 6. Well, 
Again, if you think about this, this is z of 6 over 3, which is z squared. Now, z to the 6 is always going to be a positive number. So is z squared. Cube root is defined for everything, so I don't need absolute value here. The square root of x to the 8th is x to the 8 over 2, which is x to the 4th. Do I need absolute value? It's a square root. Why would this one be different than number a? Well, the reason part c would be different is that x to the fourth is always positive, regardless of whether I put in a positive or negative number. For example, if I take the square root of negative 2 to the eighth power, which, by the way, is 256, the answer is 16. It doesn't matter whether 2 is positive, x is positive or negative. That answer will be the same because of this fourth power. But you have to be careful on this one. This is x to the 6 over 2, which is x cubed. Now, x cubed could be negative. If x is negative, x cubed is negative. And you know that this means positive square root. So I need those absolute value signs there. Cube roots are defined for everything. So y to the 9 times 1 third is y to the 9 over 3, which is y cubed. And x to the 18th to the 1 sixth. Now remember, 1 sixth of the 6 root, that's an even power. So I have to be careful here. That's x to the 18 over 6, which is x cubed. And because this is the 6th root, and it's possible if my original input was negative, that this answer could be negative, I need to put absolute value signs around this. Now, this absolute value is a little bit of an esoteric point. It will be useful for those of you going on into pre-calculus and higher level math. But most of the time, we will be giving the instruction, assume variables are non-negative. I hope you have found this video helpful.